checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Maybe we have to lead into the raw review. Look, if we we'll get to what we can with it, but did you see Rikishi is pissed? Yes, I did. <laughs> so everybody up on the website right now, there's a story up there where Rikishi has got his own podcast and he is not happy with the treatment of his son Jey Uso. Quote. Why do you not push or give the most popular baby face in my eyes, be it my son or not, if the yeet master or the yeet man is over, whatever is the problem, not giving this guy, you know, some type of title or something. That's what he asked on the show. It would only be good for business, wouldn't it? Rikishi continued to address Uso's booking and his concerns regarding his son's storyline heading into SummerSlam by saying, quote, I get hot when I'm talking about this because whether it's my son or somebody else, the kid worked hard. They conquered the tag team. What else is there to do now? He breaks it off with Yeet. He does his thing here, and it's not like they're giving the gas pedal to him. Before I go on, what do you think about uh, Rikishi being very uh, protective of his son? Well, <laughs> what I will Besides say... Besides him somehow believing it's real. Rikishi said that he would go to bat for anybody in this situation, even if it wasn't his son. Well, I haven't heard him do that for anybody else. So, um, well, you haven't listened I to the podcast question enough, that. I guess. You know? I, I, hey, I guess not. I don't know. I mean, sure, you could do more with Jey Uso, but to go from, think about it, to go from being a tag guy, and not only that, a, a tag team in a made up of twins, in which I don't think there's ever been a case in which one guy has broken out and become a single star in a twin tag team before. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we had, I guess, Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, and they would yeah, have been I the most successful so, ones, yeah. right? So I think Jay Uso has done a I phenomenal Randy job. Mulkey was well over, way over than Bill Mulkey. That's, you know. <laughs> I think Jay Uso has done a great job moving up the card, but there's a ton of guys that deserve title opportunities and i mean i'm sure he's gonna get one in due time you yeah, know i think he's... it looks like it looks like maybe he and Sami Zayn, after Sami Zayn gets murdered by braun breaker at SummerSlam, maybe him and Sami Zayn will get a shot at the judgment day in a return match for the tag titles that seems to be uh, one of rikishi's problems though is the fact that he's entering into this he says quote summer slam where's he I don't know. Let's write him in like he likes mommy. That's the best those writers got. Let's write this guy into a relationship with mommy. What are y'all trying to do? Break his marriage up? You can't put him in a good storyline, so what are you going to do now? God forbid you guys try to tell him or tell her to tongue kiss each other on Raw. That better not happen. Is he jumping the gun on this? Hey, maybe he knows more than we do. But maybe it's very maybe. odd to hear somebody upset with their son being inserted into the top storyline on the show that they are on. But Hey, I, I understand. Hey, he's looking at the past history and things usually don't turn out so great for couples when you have other people inserted into their love storylines. So That's I understand been the his trepidation. You know, bring in your wife. You're going to lose your wife. You know, your significant other, but Monday night raw Jay Uso was there. Gunther opened the show by coming down to the ring and cutting a promo. Uh, Damian Priest, he ran him down again. He came out immediately, didn't say a word, just did what he should have done, which is punch Gunther right in the face. They started going back and forth with each other, with the referees and security breaking him up. Then after a commercial break, they were still fighting. Priest attacked him again. Adam Pearce and the security was able to get him separated, which led in to the number one contendership for Sami Zayn's Intercontinental title, Braun Breaker against Ilya Dragunov. As Tom mentioned, Braun Breaker won this match. I mean, these two guys are perfect for each other. I mean, do you yeah, like the Braun Breakensteiner? That's what they're calling it now? Braun Breaker is great at killing guys, and there's perhaps no one better on the yeah. planet than getting killed than Ilya Dragunov. He's he's right up there with that blood sport lineup. I don't know that I've ever seen a bad Ilya Dragunov match. Some people online claimed that they did a few times, but I still haven't seen it happen. He can go from having a dead crowd to having them rabid by the end of his performance. And I mean, maybe my favorite guy to watch in the entire world right now. 
Did you like the finish? Dragunov drove off the apron to the outside. Breaker speared him. Cole immediately started talking about Dragunov hitting his head on the back of the ring apron, so the referee called it off, awarded the win to Braun. They didn't like it, although they still cheered Braun, you know, when he was announced as the victor. I mean, it did what it needed to do, I guess. They want to protect Ilya Dragunov. By murdering him on the floor yeah, and having him take it out? By the by, the refs. But he can say I mean, in his when he's going like this that you never pinned me, Braun. You know what I mean? You could always go back to that at some point, especially maybe if again him and Gunther are going to have to get into it at some point, right? <laughs> not not yet, but it's coming. You know it. Well, Ilya Dragunov is going to need some wins before well, he gets exactly. up there to face Gunther, the world champion. Yeah, but, after but but you start by not him. losing. That's that's what, that's what they had going on there. Uh, he, he, they had a phenomenal match. What was it? Maybe a month ago, too much in the same vein of this one, where like the crowd's not too into it to begin, and then you know as these guys are wrestling, they just can't help themselves, but to go crazy for it. They're unsinkable, and Braun is so good already with how he reacts, and it just the the whole thing. It's 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 they are perfectly made for each other. Got to move on here. Sonya Deville defeated Lyra Valkyrie in about eight minutes before this. Rhea addressed the Judgment Day. Minus Priest, she wanted some answers. She didn't get the answers that she wanted. She just wanted everybody to stay away from Jey Uso. Then it was time for confessions with Uncle Howdy. This time around, it was Nikki Cross. Uh, she was ignored and suffered in solitude. Howdy told her to take a look at herself, so she screamed. And it ended. It was very quick, this one. Uh... Any thoughts on either this or the fact that Jelly Roll will be at SummerSlam? I'm a big Jelly Roll fan, so I was happy to hear that. The hate goes on. Do you believe he should be attacked by the Wyatt Six uh, during his concert performance? Do you think he could do something with that? I, I'd be worried for his health. I, I look at him and I'm worried for his health now, but... CM Punk then came out for an in-ring promo. This segment crossed into the top of the hour. Fired up Punk said he saw a surgeon on Saturday, told him he was cleared. So now that he is, he wanted to fight Drew, and he demanded Drew come out and get the beating that he deserved. Drew walked out, of course, fake like he was going to fight, then said no. Uh, Punk went after him. Security broke him up. Drew held up his bracelet, really pink, pit, 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 pissed Punk off. And then Adam Pierce stormed out told Punk that Drew is leaving something out of the story about not wanting to fight for night, and that is that they have made the match official for SummerSlam. Pierce adds, if there's any physicality between the two, the match is off, and whoever throws the first punch is suspended indefinitely. He then introduces the special guest referee, who is Seth Rollins, who came out twirling around in a long baby blue jacket in the front. and It was a blouse. Blouse. No, in the yeah. back, it was a women's cutoff blouse. In the front, it was like a long duster jacket. What the hell is that? I have no answers for you. Can you buy I, that I off the know. rack somewhere? Is that available in, in Vegas? Can you go to Vegas and get something like that? I don't think that's available anywhere on this planet besides Seth Rollins' closet. Sami Zayn. Uh, long story short, cut a promo on Braun Breaker, skipping ahead some things on the show here, uh, including a lot of Judgment Day drama, which built up to the end. Uh, but Sami Zayn cut a promo on being ready for Braun Breaker at SummerSlam during it. The old ruckus was heard, and he runs over, and the Judgment Day is beating up on Jay and makes the save. What led into this was the fact that it seemed to me as if Finn Balor was setting up Dominic Mysterio to just happen to walk past Liv Morgan, which of course Carlito spilled the beans on later on, which really pissed off Rhea. What pisses me off is seeing Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain always out there in the mix. They beat Xavier Woods, Tozawa, and Otis Tom. Um, any thoughts on this or the fact that Chad Gable is so petty that he wanted after the match for Otis, Tozawa, and Maxine to stay in the ring in order to laugh at them. That's a level, level of petty that I can really appreciate. He did want Otis back in the fold. He said, look, he the Wyatt Six is not only after us, but they're after you. And you guys could use some backup. And Otis, not into it. No. Said no. 
They got into it. Otis actually grabbed Chad, which led to the Creeds, you know, turning up the heat on him. So it was almost there for Otis to lay out Chad, but it didn't happen. The Creeds were about to beat on Otis outside the ring with chairs. When the lights went out, it became spooky time. The Wyatt Six came out on the ramp as Uncle Howdy appeared behind Chad Gable in the ring and then laid him out with the sister Abigail. If Next they hadn't was- got to those, if they hadn't got to those creeds, I would have. I was on my way out there to take Brutus down. Well, you got held up by Liv Morgan up in the stands. We'll get to that in. Uh, yeah, she in- stole my shorts. <laughs> in a minute. Here. Bronson Reed against Pete Dunn was supposed to happen, but Sheamus came out, beat up Dunn. That led to Sheamus and Bronson Reed brawling. Dunn got back into it. Whole thing ended with Sheamus KOing Reed with the brogue kick. So. All three of them should face each other at SummerSlam. Then Rhea yelled at the Judgment Day about attacking Jay. After a break, this is where Carlito spilled the beans. She grabbed Dominic by the ear, dragged him to the ring, and said, Rhea, if you want to, or Liv, if you want him, come get him. And Liv goes out there in her very short shorts, cuts a promo from way in the crowd, Tom, and uh, she thinks that Dom is going to say, I love you, but instead he screams, I hate you, Liv. You're stupid. Are you deaf? And then something in Spanish. And then, I don't like you. You've ruined my life over and over again. Then more Spanish. And then, I can't stand you. You've ruined everything for me. And then he finished off and, and trailed off in more Spanish. So are, are you involved oh. and invested into this whole thing? Oh, and then at the end... Rhea grabs him by the face, whispers some sweet nothings into his ear, and then licked him. Licked his face. Yeah, you got, you got the clump there saying that, just like Michael Cole did when he was trying to say it. Liv Morgan stormed away in tears. And then it was actually time damn near for the main event, like it is for this show, which we'll get to when we get back from break. From break. Wrestling Observer Live. Yo, Mike Semper, VV Filthy, Tom Waller here with you, stumbling through this Raw review, trying to go fast with it. Zoe Stark faces Alina Vega, another they were a bunch of nine-minute matches on this show. This was one of them. They all had commercial breaks in them. This did. And uh, Zelina Vega got the win over Zoe Stark. Uh, Mike. Wh- yeah? Did you see the celebration symbol that this team did? Of no. Sonya, Zoe and Shayna. I mean, I remember they were standing there in the ring, but I don't remember what their celebration was. was what was it? They, they all put their... F- <laughs> you just got to find a picture. I don't feel right saying it over there. <laughs> Another awesome Gunther uh, video package, hyping himself up and running down Damian Priest as well as the rest of the division uh, aired. Uh, there were some extra uh, on there for Seth Rollins, I noticed during that whole thing, and then it was time for the main event. Jey Uso and Sami Zayn defeated Finn Balor and J.D. McDonough in about 17 minutes. Carlito and Dom got involved during the match. Sami hit the haluva kick on J.D., followed uh, by Jay hitting the frog splash for the pin. They made a big deal out of the fact that it was a non-title match and uh, the champions lost. And as you mentioned, Braun Breaker is going to beat Sami Zayn. He killed him with a spear after the match, slid away from Jey Uso, so... Yeah, hard for me to believe that he's not going to be the Intercontinental Champion. And the way that Rhea Ripley is talking about the fact that the Judgment Day is involved with Jey Uso and, and uh, Sami Zayn, uh, they're probably going to be involved in the tag picture. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.